Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this seven game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that. YouTube continues to tell me about 60% of my audience is not subscribed. So if that's you and you enjoy the content, take one second to smack that subscribe button. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you are getting very serious about NBA DFS, I do offer an NBA DFS package over here on Patreon where you can get access to my premium NBA projections, NBA data sheet, player stats, team stats, play context, stats, core plays, injury impact insights, and NBA Discord chat access. Um, so check that out. Link below in the description. Getting some really good feedback of people winning some money over there, so glad that I can help. And if you are interested, that's linked down below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this slate today. First game on the slate. This game comes in right now with a 234 over under with a 4.5 point spread in favor of the Philadelphia 76ers. So a game that's expected to move at a very quick pace. Right now, Ben Simmons is listed as out. Joel Embiid is listed as questionable. And Bradley Beal is listed as questionable. Um, all of these being some very significant news. Um, if Bradley Beal is out, of course, that's going to make Russell Westbrook just a tremendous play at 10-2. He's going to take on a ton more responsibility. Already is a great play um, night in and night out, especially in a fast up-tempo game. But if you take away Bradley Beal, he's usually just going to soar through the roof. So I would love Russell Westbrook if he's out, if Bradley Beal's in. I'll definitely have interest in some Bradley Beal. Um, but as mentioned, if he's out, you know, it's Russell Westbrook. But then you're also going to see probably um, Raul Nito climb into the starting lineup. He's priced over here at 4-3. Um, so maybe you could play him as value play. Probably not going to have too much interest in him. The thing that's kind of scary about the Washington rotation is they are spread pretty thin. So if you take out Bradley Beal, all these guys down here will become much more viable plays. It's just a matter of who you're really trying to prioritize. Um, you know, you got Mo Wagner, Garrison Matthews, uh, Denny Avija, Robin Lopez, Alex Len, Gil Robinson. Just the list goes on. But, you know, most likely Nito's going to climb into that starting spot. And he is directly correlated with Beal to the, due to the fact that he is a guard. Um, so... He'd be who you're looking to, and then Denny Avicii. Those would be the two guys I'm saying will get the biggest bump. Rui Hachimura as well at 5'5". So all those guys become much better plays if there is no Bradley Beal. And there is no Ben Simmons on the Philadelphia side, so you're going to continue to play Jake Millen and Seth Curry. Both these guys should be seeing a big bump up in minutes, and you should Seth Curry specifically seeing the most um, last night putting up 29 DraftKings points. They both got around like mid-20s minutes, and I think that was because of the blowout. We could see these guys both get up to around like 30 minutes tonight. So they're definitely both viable options in a matchup against a Washington squad that just is terrible defensively. And then you have Dwight Howard here at 6K. It was only priced at 6-3, I mean 5-3 last night. Went out there and put up 39 DraftKings points at 6K. It's going to be a little more difficult to play him. However, once again, Washington dreadful defensively. And then Tony Bradley did get the start last night down here at 3-4. He could become a very viable play as well, getting 22 minutes, putting up 26 DraftKings points. Um, you know, not a terrible play to be playing in tournaments. And then most of all, it's going to be Tobias Harris getting the biggest bump with no Ben Simmons. If there's no um, Joel Embiid, he gets even more of a bump. Only saw 25 minutes last time out. Um, I'd expect him to get mid-30s in this one. And once again, the matchup could not get better taking on this Washington defense. Cleveland taking on New Orleans, second game on the slate. Right now, this game comes in with a... 228 and a half over under with a seven and a half point spread in favor of the New Orleans Pelicans. Decently paced game. Uh, Cleveland definitely getting a pace bump in this one, taking on this New Orleans squad. So they definitely have some interest in these guys. Kevin Love listed as questionable. Darius Garland listed as questionable. Um, if Kevin Love comes back, that's definitely going to shake some things up. Just keep an eye on that one. Um, but. If he's out, it's going to continue to be Dean Wade. we got Chetty Osman. Larry Nance Jr. is back at 5-4. Um, so he's going to be a great play, I think. We could see him climb back into the rotation and get some pretty decent minutes in this one um, at a 5-4 price tag. It's a very respectable price tag. And then as far as anyone else on the Cleveland side, you're looking at Jared Allen and Colin Sexton. They're priced up for a good reason. They're 1A and 1B. you got the point guard, the center, and the offense. Um, and they get a very quick, you know, fast, up-tempo pace bump. Um so both these guys make a lot of sense, especially Colin Sexton. We've seen him go absolutely crazy recently, putting up 39, 32 real-life points, putting up 57 and 57 DraftKings points. So um, definitely going to have some interest in Colin Sexton in this one. And as far as the New Orleans side, you know, they're getting more of a pace down. Um, Zion Williamson at 9-1 continues to be kind of the head honcho of the offense, getting the most uh, DK points night in and night out. 
So I do think that I like him. Um, but it's just a matter of his price tag is what I'm trying to get at here. 9-1 is quite a bit to pay when you can go down to a guy like Brandon Ingram at 8-3. Uh, who put up a bit of a dud last night. Only 23 DraftKings points. Um, so, you know, fire beware. I mean, as far as the pace being not the fastest, Eric Bledsoe at 5-8 makes the most sense to me as far as the price tag and his ability to actually get there at that price tag. Um, but it's really going to be Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and Zion Williamson for me. They're the three to lock in on, and I would prefer Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram at their current discounted prices. Um, depending upon, you know, how much salary you have left, I do think that Zion could outscore Brandon Ingram by a few points, uh, but based on price tag, I'd still prefer Brandon Ingram. Third game on the slate. Right now, this game comes in with a 227.5 over under, a 3.5 point spread in favor of the Denver Nuggets, taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, so, you know, fairly decent uh, pace here, but um, nothing that's going to blow you away. Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray continue to be great plays at their respective price tags. They're the ones that are getting the most usage in the offense. Nikola Jokic himself priced all the way up to 10-9, but for good reason. The guy's literally averaging about 59 draft key points a game. As a matter of fact, he is averaging more than that. He's averaging 59.6 draft key points per game, so... You know, there's a reason that he's priced up Jamal Murray at 8-4. Same rule applies to him. Um, putting up consistently around 40 DraftKings points. You know, Memphis isn't exactly the best matchup, I will say. Um, not that they're the worst, but maybe not getting quite as, as excited. You got Michael Porter Jr. down here at 7-4, who continues to see a lot of minutes. Jonas Valanciunas and John Morant are the top two guys on the other side. I do think that it's not a bad thing to take advantage of this Denver defense right now. Um, I think Denver has a traditional role of being a pretty good defense based on, you know, recent years, and they're not really that good this year, so continue to target this Denver squad. They don't really scare me defensively. Dylan Brooks at 5'2", a guy I had a lot of interest in last time out. I kind of put up a dud, unfortunately, but he continues to be priced in the low 5K range. He can absolutely shoot it from behind the arc, so if he gets hot, um, you're going to be real happy with his score. And then you, lastly, you're looking at Will Barton on the Denver side at 5'4". With there being no Jermichael Green and Paul Millsap, possibly, I will continue to have interest in him. If Jermichael Green and Paul Millsap come back, I'm going to have less interest. Gary Harris is still out, but they could cut into his usage quite a bit. Orlando taking on San Antonio. This game comes in right now with a... 220 and a half over under with a seven point spread in favor of the San Antonio Spurs. Expected to be a fairly slow game and expected to not really be all that close. San Antonio expected to win, you know, fairly easily. Uh, Terrence Ross, Evan Fournier, and Cole Anthony are all listed as questionable. So those are all, you know, pretty significant injuries we're going to have to keep an eye on. If they continue to be out, we're going to look at Dwayne Bacon and Michael Carter Williams. If the, one or two of them comes back, you know, we're going to be prioritizing those guys at their full go um, for sure because they're going to come back into their starting roles. Um, and or heavy usage rules. Terrence Ross off the bench as a sixth man. Aaron Gordon on a back-to-back -back, um, was limited last time out after returning after being uh, out for quite some time with an injury. Played 14 minutes. He'll probably play, you know, around the same. If he does play, they might even rest him. DeMar DeRozan has already been listed as out in this one. We know LaMarcus Aldridge is out um, uh, after the passing of his father. So uh, prayers up for DeMar DeRozan. It's never good news. Um, but as far as how that affects the usage on this team. You know, DeJounte Murray, um, Jacopo will become great plays, specifically DeJounte Murray at 7-5. I think he's going to take on a large role. Um, Jacopo, there is no LaMarcus Aldridge, Rudy Gay, Derek White, Kelvin Johnson, all these guys down here, especially in this, um, you know, 5-2, 4-9, 4-8 range are going to be very good, good plays. Um, Rudy Gay and... Keldon Johnson, I'm really going to have interest in because of the fact that there is no LaMarcus Aldridge. They're going to be filling in those forward minutes. Derek White getting some good minutes. Lonnie Walker. Um, I do really think that all these guys are viable plays. And you could play Patty Mills as well off the bench. But Keldon Johnson, Rudy Gay making a lot of sense to me. They're going to need those minutes to fill in. And then you got um, Derek White, Lonnie Walker, Patty Mills. I would prefer Derek White out of those three. But he's just coming off an injury as well. So... Um, any of those guys you could fit in your line that's based on salary. You know, if you don't have that 4-9 to get up to Derek White and you only have 4-5 or 4-4, I have no issue with tossing them in your lineups. Uh, and then, as mentioned, if Dwayne Bacon is the guy starting on the Orlando side, he's a fairly decent play at 4-2. Putting out 28 draft points like last time. Maybe a guy you could explore putting in your lineups. And lastly, Nikola Vucevic at the top. Cannot forget about him at 10-3. Just didn't bring him up because he's the most obvious play on the team. Especially if all three of those guys are out, his usage is going to be absolutely ridiculous. So I have no issues with playing Nikola Vucevic. Miami taking on Chicago. 
This game right now comes in with a 221.5 over under with a 2.5 point spread in favor of the Miami Heat. Uh, Bam Adebayo does continue to be out in this one. We're going to be looking to Kelly Olenek at 5'7". I absolutely love this matchup taking on the Chicago front court. Consistently playing mid-30 minutes, and I think this guy's an easy play to lock in your lineups, putting up 38 and 45 draft piece points. Still priced in the mid-5K range. I think he's an easy play, so I love him. Jimmy Butler at 9-2, taking on his former Chicago squad. I'm going to like him. Um, and his usage has just been through the roof as well. He was priced up at 9-5 last time out, put up 62 draft piece points. Now he gets a price tag decrease down to 9-2, so I will continue to play him. Uh, once again, we'll reiterate that this... Chicago defense does not scare me. The Miami defense doesn't scare me all too much either as far as down low without Bam out of bio. So I think that uh, Wendell Carter Jr. and Laurie Markkinen are interesting plays. Specifically, Wendell Carter Jr. at 5'9". Um, he's been back for quite some time. He's healthy as opposed to Laurie Markkinen who just returned at 6'5". So um, we did see Laurie play 28 minutes, however. So maybe he's good to go. But um, I'd prefer Wendell Carter Jr. at the slight discount and knowing that he's been healthy for quite some time. And then you got Otto Porter Jr. down here at 5'4", who also returns. So um, I will say the Chicago rotation is getting a little too uh, clumped up for my liking. You got Kobe White at 6'8". He'd probably be my favorite play on the entire team based on his price tag and usage. Um, I do think that he's a viable play. And then Zach Levine at the top at 9'6". Sure, you could play him. He'll probably get the services of the Jimmy Butler defense. So I'm probably not going to go there. Next game on the slate, Houston taking on Utah. This game right now comes in with a 227 over under with a 15 and a half point spread in favor of the Utah Jazz. Uh, so this game is not expected to stay close. Um, that is an extreme spread. Vegas is telling us, you know, Utah is going to wipe the floor with Houston. John Walls is questionable. Eric Gordon had to leave the game last time out. He's probably going to be out. Um, Derek, Daniel House Jr. is listed as questionable. Uh, so it's going to be rough for this Houston squad. Depending on the injury news, even if it is going to be a blowout, we can definitely load up on this Houston side just because of how much usage they're going to be um, getting. Victor Oladipo at 8-3 makes a ton of sense in this one, even though it's a tough matchup taking on this Utah defense. He's just going to be relied on so heavily that I'd be playing him if there is no John Wall. If John Wall is back in this one, um, you know, both these guys are going to be great plays because they're going to be relied on heavily. If John Wall is out, we're going to like these guys down here even more. Um, Jay Sean Tate, Justin Patton, Sterling Brown. Um, all of these guys are going to become much better plays. There is no PJ Tucker. There is no David Nawaba. So Sterling Brown, Ben McElmore, um, Kevin Porter Jr., who just made his debut last time out at 3-2, played 29 minutes, put up 42 DraftKings points. So, um, he could be one of the easiest plays to be putting in your lineups on this slate, honestly, at 3-2. I mean, just an obvious play. Um, so, yeah, definitely going to have interest in the Houston side. On the Utah side, it's going to be honestly, honestly kind of hard for me. Um, I'm, the blowout narrative, I don't really know who I'm looking to on this team. Maybe a Joe Ingles down here at 5-4 um, could get some extra run than he typically would. Um, Jordan Clarkson, Mike Conley would be my two favorite plays based on their price tags. I'm not really trying to pay up for... A Donovan Mitchell or a Rudy Gobert in this one, I don't think, at 7 8. Um, you could make the argument that Rudy Gobert does have a really good matchup taking on this Houston squad with no Christian Wood or anything, but I just don't really think they're going to be pushing their players all that much minutes wise in this one in a game they're expected to win fairly easily. Maybe an Ursan Ilyasova down here at 3 5 gets some more run, but I mean, the guy um, is expected to sign on. I mean, he just signed on Wednesday. Sorry, but. Um, Point being, hasn't got accustomed with the team. Probably not going to even see him get that much run. Maybe Derek Favors down here at 3-2 could be an interesting play. Uh, but he's kind of on the black back half of his career, and he's just a little bit on the older side. So they're probably not going to run him out for a bunch of minutes. So um, Gorge Niang, Gorgeous Niang, sorry I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but uh, would probably be the one I'm looking to for a simple out run. But overall, most interesting on the Houston side, as, as I explained. Last game on the slate, Indiana taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. Right now, this game comes in with a 216.5 over under, lowest on the slate with a 4.5 point spread in favor of the Los Angeles Clippers. The pace is not expected to be good in this one. The Lakers have Kyle Kuzma listed as questionable. LeBron James listed as questionable. It does look like Kyle Kuzma is more so probable, and it looks like LeBron James 
is more so probable. So expect both of them to be in. Not the fastest paced game. LeBron James will continue to be an absolute usage monster with no Anthony Davis, however. So he's always going to be a viable play if you can fit him in. And I do think that there's a value play such as the Kevin Porter Jr. that we discussed about earlier that's going to allow you to fit him in. DeMontis Sabonis and Malcolm Brogdon continue to be great plays on the Indiana side. But they do get a very tough matchup taking on this Los Angeles Lakers squad. So maybe their upside isn't quite as high as we're accustomed to in this one. As we mentioned with the pace and the matchup. And then as far as anyone else on the Los Angeles Lakers side, honestly, I think you're getting a little too cute playing anyone outside of LeBron. Marcus Saul is listed as out. So maybe you could be playing, you know, some more of the uh, the big minutes in the Montrez Harrell at 6K. Maybe he's going to be relied on more heavily, played 33 minutes before the break. So maybe he's the guy you're looking to. But other than that, no one to all to be too excited about in this one. So that is my overall breakdown. Before I let you guys go, I got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be DeJounte Murray at this 7 5 price tag. Take it on this Orlando squad that does not scare me defensively. And with no DeMar DeRozan, no Lamarcus Aldridge, I think that's going to lead to a ton of usage for DeJounte Murray in this one. I think he's priced at a reasonable price in the mid 7K range with the responsibility he's about to take on. Playing mid 30 minutes. Definitely a good fantasy point producer. Going to get you the rebounds, assists, and points. Just to put the cherry on top, so to speak. So DeJounte Murray is my lock of the night. So there you have it, guys. DeJounte Murray. Get him in your lineups. And that is all for me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that. And then don't forget to check out all the KJK TFS links, link below in the description. I uh, wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.